Let's take you through a coffee that's popular all around the planet, the latte. It's also known as a cafe latte, and the word latte literally means milk in Italian. Let's get started. First, purge your group head and preheat your portafilter. Remove, then dry before grinding. Grind your freshly roasted beans. Give the portafilter a few taps like this to settle the grounds before tamping on a level surface. The most important thing is consistent pressure each time and to visually check your tamper is level. Use the razor tool after tamping to ensure you have the correct dose. It precisely controls the height of the tamped coffee, a critical variable. Place the porter filter firmly into the group head. Before you start your shot, make sure you set your cup underneath. Today, we're splitting our shot between two cups. The reason for this is most experienced baristas use the double basket to split the shots to maximize the recipe needed to create a balanced extraction. Hit the two cup button and let the machine work its magic. Espresso should drop from the spouts at around eight to 10 seconds. What we're looking for is a flow that looks like warm honey. Just a note about the machine we're using here, the dual boiler. Like cafes, this machine has a dual boiler heating system, so you can also steam the milk while you're extracting the shot. If your machine has a single heating element, brew the shot first and then texture the milk. As milk is such a fundamental part of the latte, we're going to take you through texturing whole milk. We understand that many people prefer non-dairy alternative milks for health and sustainability reasons. Generally, these are trickier to work with than dairy, so if you are using alternative milk, please see our microfoam milk tutorial for texturing tips. First, pour the cold milk into the jug up to the bottom of the spout. Something to get into the habit of doing before and after texturing milk is to purge the steam wand to clear out condensation and milk residue. Place the steam wand around half an inch or 1.5 centimeters into the milk and open the steam valve so the air draws from near the milk surface. Lower the jug after a few seconds to introduce air to the surface of the milk. And remember, if it screeches, lower the jug further. Key here is to focus on texture and then temperature. In texturing the milk, I'm aiming for a temperature around 140 to 150 degrees Fahrenheit or 60 to 65 degrees Celsius. A good manual indicator would be when the jug becomes too hot to touch. For non-dairy, I would recommend not going over 130 degrees Fahrenheit or 55 degrees Celsius, as the milk can start to separate or curdle. This is what we're looking for, a velvety and silky smooth texture. Remember to swell the jug to distribute the air so the microfoam is mixed in evenly. Once done, don't forget to purge the steam on again to clean the remaining milk inside and then give it a wipe with a damp cloth. Now we get to the fun bit, the pour. First, I'll add a little swirl and a tap on the jug to make sure the milk is integrated and the bubbles removed. Hold the jug a little higher to begin with, like this, and watch the textured milk blend with the espresso. As the cup starts to fill, bring the jug closer to finish. The drink generally has more microfoam than a flat white, but less than a cappuccino. Here, we're aiming to have around half an inch on top. And there you have a classic cafe latte. If you want to add a personal touch with some latte art, watch our latte art tutorial before you start your next coffee. Enjoy.